In South Africa, intensive livestock grazing is degrading the soil in many areas. Heat waves on drought are compounding the problem, leaving many areas barren. To stop the land turning into a desert, some farmers in the Eastern Cape are switching from raising goats to growing plants to produce essential oils. Eco Africa went out to see how this works. Rosemary, a herb that prefers sunny and dry locations. Its value lies in the plant's tips, where precious ethereal oil collects a high-quality resource for the cosmetics and pharmaceuticals industries. Farmer William van Rensburg is nervous. This is his first harvest, and the future of the whole valley depends on this crop. Constant small stock farming and limited space simply became too much for our land, so we need to find other means of income, and that is why we look at this kind of thing, so we can continue with our livestock together with our oil. Farmers here keep Angora goats whose mohair wool is a luxury item in the clothing industry. With more and more goats, however, the local vegetation has been eaten away. A thick, green, bushy vegetation once covered these slopes. Now the barren westland holds no water and no life. Daniel Forey manages the Bavian's Clove Development Company together with Van Rensburg and other farmers he leads the transition from exploitative livestock farming to organic essential oil crops. The oils are extracted in this distillery. The essential oils, you take a lot of plant material and you distill it to a very small amount of um, product that you can easily transport in and out uh, of the kloof. And in that way, we, we, less, we reduce the amount of material that we take out of the system and all the plant material, once it's been distilled, can actually go back into the fields, go back into the system. We can use that to make our compost. It's a, it's a high value crop that you need less land to, to work with. The more efficient land use is making a difference. Whereas goats need extended grazing areas, the essential oil crops are exclusively cultivated on the fertile floor of the valley. That way the slopes have time to recover. Farmer Peter Kruger once used his entire 6,000 hectares for grazing. Today he cultivates a mere 20 hectares of rosemary for the same return. He sold his goats and most of his farm has been declared a nature reserve. Forey hopes other farmers will follow Kruger's example. The biggest part of it is actually to change the mindset of the farmers, to change the to change the way that they've been doing something for the last 40 years, we bring courage to the farmers to make that shift from a extractive to a regenerative farming practices. The God-free slopes are slowly recovering. The Living Lands Organization helps the farmers rejuvenate their land. Here on the completely degraded slope that was once grazed bare, Otto Bukes and his team worked hard to protect every single tree. Thorn bushes keep the goats away, while canvas walls collect rainwater and hold the precious soil. Beneath the thorns, new hope is sprouting. You know, we are starting to see changes, uh, even at a small scale. We've just gone through one of the worst droughts in over a hundred years. Um, and despite that, we are seeing positive changes in the ecosystem. It was a leap of faith for all involved. Van Rensburg had to buy a new irrigation system for over 65,000 euros. But the first batch of rosemary looks promising and he's sure his investment will soon pay out. It's good to be reminded that protecting the environment always pays off. I'm afraid we're now coming to the end of this week's episode of Eco Africa, but we'll be looking forward to seeing you once again next week. I am Sandra Twinobrio coming to you from Kampala here in Uganda. Bye for now, Sandra. It was a pleasure co-hosting the show with you. And to our viewers out there, remember you can find out more about environmental issues protection and activities of others sustainability wise on our social media platforms for now i'm neil tagway from the shodex garden in lagos saying bye-bye see you again next week <laughs>